What's up guys, this is Nick from Arch City Poker and in today's video I'm going to be continuing the Poker Hand Review series with today's topic covering a PLO multi-way pot hand. I think I'm going to title it something like that, I don't really know for sure, but uh, let's get right into the action. So this hand, if you guys watched episode 4 of The Grind, which was live from Las Vegas, this was the first hand that I discussed in the video and it was a hand from a 2-5 PLO game at the Aria. It was a pretty good game. The players were pretty weak, in my opinion. It seemed like the pool was pretty weak. There there could be potentially a couple really good players in that pool just because it is Las Vegas. You're going to have more grinders, more guys playing full-time. But in my particular game during the day, I, I did not think anybody was that competent. So let's get into the action and go over uh, this hand. We're going to analyze it and see if I played it correctly. So pre-flop, there was... Uh, couple limps and we were nine handed but this hand went five ways and in poker juice I can only uh, put in six opponents anyway so I'm just gonna have the five opponents and generally what positions they were in my specific villain in this hand will be on the button as I was in the big blind gets uh, limp around to me in the big blind and I check my option with queen 10 deuce deuce I think that's quite standard this would be an awful hand to try and bloat the pot with out of position so seeing a free flop will be definitely the best play here. And the flop comes jack nine deuce. So flop pretty well for my hand. <clears throat> as bad as it is and as disconnected as it is of a hand preflop, I would feel much more comfortable with a hand like queen 10 jack nine, queen 10 10 nine. Something that's uh, definitely has all four cards working together, but because I was in the big blind, I, you don't really have that option. So this is going to be as good of a flop as you're going to get often. Bottom set with the open ender, is pretty damn good. And in the actual hand as played, I decided to check. And I, I said in the video that we were all about, at least me and my specific villain were about $500 deep. So the SPR was a little bit higher than I would want usually for uh, a hand like bottom set to just start bloating the pot on an early street. However, I'm starting to think that lead may have in fact been better. I think if I had just dry bottom set in the spot, with no open ender or backdoor suit of any kind. I think it's definitely a spot to go for check call. However, I think here I was a little too passive, and my reasons for this are my hand is in fact, I'm not going to say it's often the best hand because 9-9 and jack-jack could certainly be out there, but I do think it's uh, the best hand a good amount of the time, and it's a hand that I can call a, ch a raise with. It's a hand that, you know, let's say if I lead and these two players fold in, in middle position and the cutoff and the button raises me. First of all, none of the players in this hand, and I stated specifically, I think, with the button that he is not a player that I felt like was going to put me in tough spots. I felt like these guys are going to play very straightforward. So I'm not worried about being faced with tough turns and rivers from ranges that contain hands like, let's say, Jack-10-8, which could be definitely a hand in their raising range. But even so, I have a hand that, you know, if I lead here with bottom set... I have the nut open ender. I can pick up a lot of good turns with a lot of spades. So I, I think that because of that fact, I think leading to try to get some value now, try to actually fold out some equity because I state in the video that there are, I, I'm looking for a good turn. And then essentially I think my plan is to go from there and start trying to go for value or trying to essentially I guess, get to showdown against one opponent or so. But I, I think that the point is there's actually a lot of turns that my opponents pick up a lot of equity on, and it could end up burning me later in the pot. In this specific hand, the ace of hearts comes on the turn, and that could give my opponent a lot of ways to win the hand on the river. And so I, I think that against a very straightforward player pool, especially specifically the players at my table, and with a hand that has... A lot going forward in terms of I, I can bet for for value and I can definitely call raise because of my open ender and my backdoor capabilities. I actually think a bet would have been uh, better in this spot. So as played, I, I think check is okay, but I do think bet is probably better. So turn comes to ace of hearts. And the nice thing about playing against these type of opponents is when the small blind checks here, because he could have certainly been going for check raise on the flop, once he checks, and once these three players in position on me check the flop, I think that it's really hard for them to have a better hand. I actually 
think that my bottom set is the best hand almost every single time here. I think there could be a very trashy ace-ace hand that just got there, but that's really rare, and I think that most opponents overvalue ace-ace in PLO, especially lower-stakes PLO games. So I actually think that I for sure have the best hand at this point. Again, even if I'm raised in this spot, I think a lot of hands that could raise me could be worse, like top two pair or something like ace nine, a hand like, uh, let's say, jack ten eight with hearts. So I, I think that my hand still does really well in this spot. I go for lead with pot. I think that's definitely the best play here. And the button ends up calling me, and the small blind folds. And the river comes ace of hearts, so this is an interesting spot. I think that with this particular opponent, I don't think he's going to call a larger bet with worse than, let's say, a straight, which I block pretty hard having the straight now at this point. Uh, I, I think that unblocking ace, x, and, and specifically it's going to be his two pair combos that I'm targeting, maybe a hand like ace-king, I think unblocking that makes it pretty attractive for me to bet small, in pretty much more of an unbalanced way, because I think if I get raised, it's in this player pool against this type of player. I don't think he's going to be raising at a high enough frequency. If we want to use some of the functions of poker juice here, we can go down to range distribution. I can show you guys actually how often I think he has hearts, which is what I think he could be drawing to on the turn. And then hands like ace, deuce, plus. But as you guys can see in his turn range here, I have capped him to hands that I thought he would have bet the flop with. Ace, ace, because I think he would have raised pre-flop. He seemed actually uh, overly aggressive with big pairs that were actually kind of trashy, weak pairs pre-flop. So I, I do think he never has ace, ace pretty much in the spot. And as you guys can see, he will have hearts a good amount of the time. But something you have to keep in mind is that you can't really work with frequencies with poker juice. So you have to do your kind of best guesstimation. I think even the most incompetent players in PLO are not going to be drawing with really weak flush draws on the turn here unless they have something to go with it. So let's just say on the button we do something like 10 high flush plus, and that's how many flushes we'll give him. And you can see how it changes a little bit to him having more two pair hands. So yes, he does have a decent amount of flushes on this river, but I don't think that's reason enough to check because I think if we bet, we get these two pair hands to call a small bet. And I don't think he's going to play tough enough against that often enough. I don't think he's going to take a hand like the King of Hearts blocker or Queen of Hearts blocker or a hand like, let's say, he doesn't think his ace has enough showdown value. He has ace, spades, and like King of Hearts, and he turns that into a bluff. I just don't think that he's going to be doing that enough in this spot. Now, what ended up happening in the hand is I did leave very small for a little bit less than third pot. And he did go ahead and call him muck. So I do think he had a lot of like ace nine, possibly ace jack. Uh, definitely ace king at the minimum, I would think. He could have maybe ace queen, but I, I really think with this type of player, it's probably a lot of two pairs. So it ended up working out very well. I think that on the flop, though, a lead probably would have been better. But let's just say for the sake of this video that my opponent, in fact, goes ahead and raises and pots it. So what you have to do is we're going to go to our bluff catcher function of Poker Juice. I'm going to put in his value bets as the queen high flush plus. His checks, or what he's checking, is going to be essentially his pair of aces all the way up to, like I, I guess, his jack high flushes. Not saying he can never value raise a jack high flush, but I think with this particular player and this player pool, I don't think they do a whole lot of thin raising like that. And then we'll say that his blockers are just going to be the king of hearts here. So go ahead and run it. And as you guys can see that based on his range from the turn to the river, based on how I think he plays his range on average in the spot, or at least an average player in this type of pool, he's going to be checking uh, a lot of those two pair hands back. Or at least, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. He's going to be, uh, you know, value raising. Uh, only a small percentage of his hands is going to be mainly the hearts, obviously, in my opinion. He's just not going to have much air. So if he raises, it, it's a very easy spot for us to go ahead and bet fold. And I, I think that was a very good strategy from the turn on. Like I said, flop, I think, could be a little bit better with a lead. I, I think that's a little too passive having bottom set and having a hand that just does very well against a raise with the nut open ender and the backdoor spades. I, I definitely think that was a little bit too passive, like I said. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments on this video or any 
uh, part of the line that I took in this hand or the hand itself, go ahead and let me know. Until next time, this is Nick from Arch City Poker. Take care.